Hello everyone, it's Anisha Sharp here, back for another Two Minute Tuesday. Okay, I don't know, maybe I'll call it Four Minute Friday. I'm really trying to get it into two minutes. Pray for me. So, it's been a few weeks since I've recorded a video. Um, I got some inboxes, um, people wanting me to record another video. So, here I am. Uh, I haven't been on Facebook as much because I've just been a little bit bummed by all... Do people say bummed anymore? I don't know. But, I, but I've just been a little bit disheartened, I should say, by all the negativity on social media. I'm in my backyard because my family's inside and you know how that can go. Kids kind of running in and out and if you're a mother, you understand. So I thought I'd come in the backyard. So if you hear bugs chirping and things like that, that's what you hear. I want to ask a question and that question that I'll be asking today is, does racism still exist? Um, people say, well, if we would just admit that racism is still alive and well, then, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that I think racism is still alive and well. What I do believe is alive and well is hatred, fear, and insecurity. And I think that a lot of what we're seeing in the media and social media and in America is a direct result of those three things. Um, the other day, I was... Um, combing my daughter's hair. I wanted to know what did you know who did she think she was as far as the color of her skin. So I asked her, I said, London, are you are you black? Are you white? You know, are you um purple? What color are you? And she looks at me and she goes, I'm London. <laughs> and I really liked her answer because being a certain color is really taught to us. We're not born knowing that we're African American or Caucasian or Mexican or you know Italian. We're taught that, and so um, when she said that, it, it made me think about the fact that really, you know, when I tell you, you know, I'm a brown girl, that only tells you my experience. I submit to you that who we are isn't brown, it isn't white, it isn't um, yellow, it isn't red. That is just simply the package that God put our spirit in. Who we are is in here. And the only way you'll truly know who another human being is, is if you get to know them. And if that person chooses to show up every day as who they are in here, that's the only definition you really have of who they are. Who I am is who God sent me to the earth to be. Who you are is who God sent you to the earth to be. What he sent you to change? What he sent you to do? What he sent you to impact? That is who you are. And so I just hope that one day we can stop letting this separate us from the true human experience. Because that's really where we're all living. We all have the same desires. We all want to be loved. We all want to love. We all want to be successful. We all want to make a difference. We all want our kids to be happy and successful. And, we, you know, we want to be happy. And that is a human experience. So if we can start connecting on the lines of just being human, I think there'll be more commonality than we realize. I'll leave you with this quote from Mother Teresa. She said, If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Recently, I was at a conference and they talked a lot about we are one, speaking of women being one. But I want to extend that even further to say that we are one in humanity, if that's a word. <laughs> but in being human, we're one. And the, late, the author, Tori Lynn, she goes further to say, when we're one, we win. I'll see you next time. And remember, smile, it looks good on you, and the world needs to see it. Bye-bye.